how to merge and refine models in stable diffusion to get really amazing results. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I want to show you a way that brings the AI art closer to art because you can make your own models, refine them and then have results that only you can create. And this is easier than you might think. Now, last time I showed you how to use Dream Booth to train your own models and all of that is super easy. This time I will show you how to merge these models with other models, refine them, mix them. It's like seasoning, like you are a master chef. Now let's get started here, first of all, with some additions to my last video. So when you have here your Dream Booth tab and you go into parameters after you've set everything up, like I told you last time, some people said they had a little bit of a problem getting things start to render. So in the parameter tab, scroll down where you see advanced here and there you want to remove the check mark from use EMA. Then you want to make a check mark next to 8-bit Adam. Then you want from mixed precision to select FP16 and from memory attention select default. Hopefully this additional information can help you get your rendering started. Of course you still need a strong computer. There is also a use CPU only that is for when your GPU is very slow and old, but this method is super slow. So I would not suggest that. Okay, let's get to our mixing of the models. What does it actually mean? Well, as you know, with stable diffusion, there's a lot of different models out there. You can train your models, you can download different models from the internet, there's different versions of these models, and you can mix these together. Now, what I show you today is mostly meant for the models of 1.5 and for the models that have been trained on that to mix them together. But as you know, with 1.5, as of now, you get actually the best results. So this is really to your benefit. Now, where do you do that? You go to the checkpoint merger tab up here. And there are some settings here that at first look kind of confusing. And it is not as easy to get information about what that actually means. So I want to make it super easy for you to understand what is going on. You can see here that you can load up to three different models, the model A, the model B and the model C. Now the primary model as it's called here, model A, this is what you want to refine. So if you have trained your model with Dream Booth and you want to mix it with other models, you load your own model here into A. In this case, here you can see my own trained model. I will load that here. And then in the secondary model, you load whatever you want to mix with that. So in this case, I have selected from my list, the Chroma V5 model. Now below, you see some other settings. First of all, the custom name. Here, I want to highly, highly suggest to you that you write names that include all of the settings, all of the things you did here. So afterwards, when you do testing on these merged models, you can still afterwards understand what is going on. So you can see here, for example, in this case, the file name I'm using is Oli222. So that means I have my Olivio model and I have already mixed it with the F222 model. Now I'm mixing it with the Chroma V5 model with a weighted sum of 0.3. So when I look at the file name, I know exactly what's going on, even when I come back days later or weeks later. Below that you have a multiplier. Multiplier is super easy to understand. This defines how much of model B you want to mix into model A. And you can actually read these values as percentages. So if you put this on zero, that means zero percentage of B is going into A. If you put it to one, it's a hundred percent, right? So that's easy. And if you put it anywhere in between, for example, to 0 0.25, that is going to be 25%. Now, personally, I would suggest to you that you generate multiple merges, let's say five different merges, and then try out if they give you the results, if they give you the benefits you're looking for. Afterwards, you can also mix them in the next step. So you load the merged model into A now, and then load other models here into B or C that you want to mix with that to refine it even more. So in what case would you use three models in here? Well, this works as follows. In the A model, 
Like I said, you have the model you want to refine, but now if you have a B and a C model, you want to figure out the difference between the B model and the C model, and only the difference is carried over into the A model. For that to happen, you click down here on Add Difference. And for Add Difference, you always need three models. It's really important. So the merging process is figuring out the difference. And then again, with the slider here, you're deciding how much of the difference in percentage should go into model A. Then down here, you have a CKPT or a safe tensors file. Doesn't really matter what you choose. I'm actually not sure what float 16 is for in this case, so I don't check it and the models work so far very well. Simply click on run. It's working actually pretty fast to create these models. And then they are automatically loaded into your models stable diffusion folder. So when you click here on these blue arrows, they are now here in these lists from the models that you can choose from. You can see I have created quite a lot of these merge models to test them. So go into your text to image. Of course, they also work with image to image. And you can start here prompting and testing one thing I would absolutely suggest you do is to write a good prompt, some good negative prompts, test here if you get an image that you like, and then you scroll down here to scripts and select X epsilon plot. In X epsilon plot for the X type, select checkpoint name. Checkpoint name is the different models. And here you write the names of the models you want to test without the CKPT at the end. So just really the name of the model. And in between you put commas to separate them. And then you can click here on generate and this will render through all of these different models and then also give you an overview grid that shows you the results with the names so you can compare them directly. So let's have a look at such a comparison right now. You can see on the top left, I have the model that I've trained on myself. And in the prompt, I ask also for a baseball head and a forest in the background. Now in the second model, you can see that I have mixed my model with the F222 model. It's a nicer dynamic. The colors are nice. Everything feels a little bit more interesting. So the two means I've mixed in 20%, four is 40%. Down here is 60%, 80%, and a 100%. But you can see that the more I mix in of the F222 model, the less the images look like me until it doesn't look like me at all and the AI is just doing a random person. So you want to work with just small percentages that you're mixing into your model. Here we have a second example. On the left, you can again see the original model that I've trained one time with a baseball cap, the second one as a marble bust. And you can see that my originally trained model doesn't pick up on that at all. Now mixing in the F222 model gives me again a nice dynamic with the baseball cap, but with the bust, it really picks up on that and gives me an interesting looking bust. But then in a second merge, I also mixed in not just the F222 bundle, but also the Chroma V5 model with a weight of 30%. So you can see that again, the dynamic is even more intense here, beautiful soft lighting. And also for the bus, it became very dynamic and beautiful. But when we zoom in here to the bus, you can also see that not only is the bus more dynamic, also when you look at the beard here with just the F222 model, the beard is nice, but it is also very straight from the hair and on the waves in the hair, how everything is looking. While when we have also Chroma V5 mixed in a little bit, we get these very nice curls here in the beard a very dynamic flow in the beard hair. So that is also very beautiful. And you can see in the comparison of the two that with the Chroma V5 model, the result is more dynamic. Now, when we're talking about the quality of the output, the artistic expression of the AI render, there's a lot to be said about the prompting you do. So for this result here, I want to actually show you three different tricks that will give you much better result with your own trained models. So let's have a look here at the prompt. What I've written in my positive prompt is centered portrait of XY8 two round brackets, Olivio Sarikas, 
closing the two round brackets as a three round brackets Roman warrior in full armor closing the three round brackets comma award winning photography comma soft bokeh comma cinematic lighting comma art germ comma Greg Rukowski comma Mucha. So there are probably at least two things where you wonder what is this? What are you doing here? So here is a super amazing trick that you need to try. Why did I write X, Y, 8? It doesn't mean anything, but it will change the output of the AI image because this will give you a different sum that is going into the generation process when the AI renders the image. So you can just write some random letters, some random numbers with the same seat down here with the exact same setting. And what this does is that the composition is staying mostly the same. Sometimes it's changing, but it changes small details in the output of your render. And that is pretty amazing because you can just fine tune your image by pushing in random letters and random numbers. Now, the next thing here are these round brackets. What does this mean? Why do I do that? Well, the more round brackets you do, the more emphasis the AI has on this part of your prompt. So for two round brackets, I get more emphasis on my name. So the output, as you can see here, looks a lot more like me. And then for the three round brackets on the Roman Varia in full armor, I get the Roman armor that I want to have here instead of just a t-shirt or just some random clothing. So that is also a good trick to get what you actually want. Now for the artist's name at the end of my prompt, I actually don't want to have their styles, but what I want to have here is a little bit of painterly expression, a very detailed, nice and soft face, and also a more artistic vibe to the overall image. And adding in these artistic names, even though I don't want the style, gives me still a better end result that has this kind of beautiful painted modern look to it. So with these three tricks, you can actually get a lot better results with the same model, because even with the best model, without a good prompt, you won't get a good result. Now here also, I have read a little bit of a negative prompt. So I wrote in the negative prompt, t-shirt, comma, ugly, comma, disfigured, comma, blurred, to give the AI a little bit of hints what I don't want to have. Now for the testing of your prompt, for the testing of the abilities of your models, of your mergers, I would also highly suggest to you that you go down here to batch size, set this to six. And this means you will always get six images as an output that you can compare with each other. This is very helpful to see if there's actually changes because a single image is not going to tell you much about how effective the prompt is, especially because with stable diffusion, not just the prompt is changing a lot, but also the seed is changing a lot. So you want to do some seed experimentation too. And with six images, you can do at least a little bit of that. Now, personally, I have trained my Dream Booth models to work with the Euler A because here I can get amazing results with as little as 20 steps. So this very detailed and nice image here has been created with just 20 steps. And of course, if I create a lot of test renders, if I create these six images every single time, it helps me to have very low render steps because then I can create more test images in a shorter time. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.